Hi there, my name is Daniel Walter Scott and I'm a trainer here at Bring Your Own Laptop. Okay, and in this uh, exercise, what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to create a new file and we're going to be creating this flyer here. Okay, it's just a simple little flyer I've made for um, this fictional company called The Green Gardener. Okay, and um, I'll show you a quick little preview of it before we go on. So um, I'll show you this little trick down the bottom here. If you've got a document that you want to open up, Okay, it's set by normal. Okay, views it just the way we're viewing it now. But if you look at presentation, it's a great way of kind of showing it full screen. Okay, works kind of like PowerPoint. You can toggle through pages this way. And when you're finished showing it full screen to your client, hit escape. Okay, and it jumps back into normal mode. Okay, so we're going to create this one. So let's close this one down. Okay, and let's go to File, New, and Document. Okay. And so what we're going to do is I'll explain a few of these things and let's get our new page ready. So for this one, we've got to look at intent. Okay, so we're going to be building this as going to be a printed flyer. So we don't want web and we don't want digital publishing. Okay, digital publishing refers to publishing for the iPad and web is websites and print is more the traditional use of InDesign. So we want that one. Uh, number of pages is just going to be one. Okay, facing pages. This is something we don't need. For this exercise, what it facing pages is for if you're doing a newsletter or a magazine. Um, imagine a magazine because you'll have two pages side by side, you'll need to see um, what they call the spread. So you'll need to see the left hand page and the right hand page facing each other. Okay, so you can see how they interact together. Okay, in this case, it's just going to be a one page flyer, so we're not going to need the pages sitting uh, placed next to each other so we can see them together. Okay, um, for page size, okay, there's a bunch of defaults in here. Now, if you're looking for web sizes, you have to go and change the intent at the top here. So we've got the American defaults and we've got um, the metric defaults. So we're going to start with A4, but we're going to cut this down. Okay, so this one is going to be 115 millimeters okay, by 275 millimeters. Okay, we're going to keep a portrait. Columns. Now, columns we're not going to need for this one either. This is what you use in a more of a publication, like a magazine or a newsletter or annual report. Um, it allows you to add like invisible columns to a document to allow a bit of consistency through a longer document. Okay, they don't print, but it allows you to kind of line things up evenly on a page so that you can have text of column that all all line up nicely. But we're not going to need it for this one, so we're going to leave it at one. Okay, and this next bit is your margins. Okay, just like you have in Word, you've got a set of margins away from the edge of the page just to keep every page consistent so nothing goes too close to the edge and you might have uh, edges that your printer can't get close to. So this is a very typical size for, um, for a margin. What we're going to do is we're going to change the bottom a little bit. Okay, so we're going to unlink this little icon and we're going to change this one to 20 millimeters. Okay. If I left the link on, it will change all at the same time, but I'm going to leave them all at 12.7 uh, millimeters and change the bottom for 20. Why? It's just, um, it's kind of a visual cue there at the bottom. It's very off, uh, it's, it's very common to have just a slightly bigger gap down the bottom. Uh, you'll see it in kind of artworks. You'll also see it in magazines so that they can allow things like page numbers and document titles to run along the bottom a little bit. Okay, but it's nice just having a slightly thicker bottom on a page, even if it's just a one page advert. Okay, this one here, yours might be twirled up, okay, so you might have bleed and slug, so twirl that down so we can look at this one. Now bleed, bleed is used on um, pages that the images goes all the way to the edge. What happens is, if you print, uh, say, a cover of a magazine, what they'll do is they'll add a bit of a bleed, a real typical one is three millimeters, and what they'll do is the images will go all the way off the side, okay, of the image, three millimeters off the edge of the page. Okay, and what happens is that three millimeters will end up getting chopped off and cleaned up, okay, and cut down to its original size. So if I add three millimeters to this, it's going to add three millimeters either side of this 115. It just means I can overlay images into the side margins and that it can be cut off so it's got a nice crisp edge because most printers won't be able to print right to the edge of the paper. Okay, so this one here is going to be sent out. We're going to have a, um, a bleed of three millimeters. If you're printing it in-house, okay, um, you won't have any bleed, okay, because very often your printer, your uh, laser at work or your bubble jet at home won't be able to print right to the edges, okay. So what you'll do is you'll generally just keep um, keep the colors and images away from the edge, and you won't need any bleed. Now slug, slug something is probably you won't need unless you're a printer. Okay, the actual printers themselves, what they can do is they can add the slug. It's like a bleed, 
a little bit extra around the outside of a document. Okay, it allows them to write things in it. So it might be that you've got something that's going out to print that has a perforation on it, okay, or it might have a cut, or it might be had glued on one side. What they can do is they can use a slug to write um, things in there that help them for the maybe the um, production of it at the end, so it might need to be cut and glued. Okay, so very often you will never use a slug, but you use bleed. Okay, so um, we've done all that. If you wanted to now, and you're doing this over and over again, Okay, you can save this as a document preset. But what you'll find is, like most, <coughs> excuse me, like most people, okay, what you'll find is you won't save the preset because um, you, uh, if you want to do another document just like this one, you'll open up the old document and you'll do a save as. So uh, very often, um, these ones are great if you are maybe a studio manager and you're trying to get some presets in. But if you're just working on your own work, you probably won't. All right, let's click OK we should have our nice document ready to go. Okay, the white, all the way to the white is the actual page itself. See this bleed here? Okay, this is the red mark here. So um, as I tried to explain before, it's a little bit easier now. If the image overlaps onto the edge here, okay, you'll need to make sure your color boxes and all your images overlap over into the red. So when the printer gets it, they'll print all the way to the red and then trim it along here. Okay, if they try to line it up perfectly with the edge of the page, they might not get it and they might get a little white line where it doesn't quite meet up on one of the sides. Okay, so that's the bleed. This is your margin in the middle here. These margins don't print. Okay, they are just there as a visual guide to make sure that you've got an even space on both sides and the top away from the edge. Okay, okay so that's it for this tutorial. This is setting up a new document. Okay, uh, join us for the next one. All right, bye-bye.